Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel and for today's video, I'm with my husband right here. Mr. Me. Mr. Me. Yes, and we will share something about the CRBA and what you're gonna prepare when you apply CRBA and U.S. Passport. So CRBA means Consular Report of Burn Birth Abroad. So these are the checklists. So first is you have to prepare for a what is this? Two by two inch inch photo of the applicant and the parents. So it's a two by two picture. That's number one. Has to be a regular passport picture. Yeah. You go to get your pictures, you got to tell them. It's for a passport. They don't know what you're talking about. So. Yeah, because they, they have like Backgrounds. two by two Philippine passport, something like that. Passport size, Philippine passport size. So you have to tell them that it's U.S. for U.S. And also you have to prepare the original birth certificate of the child. When you get the photos, you need two of each one. Mm -mm. Each person needs two. Yes. Don't poke your eyes. <laughs> so original birth certificate you have to prepare for that and you also have to prepare a another copy like Xerox copy and then the next one is original evidence of the parents US citizenship so the U.S. citizen parent must have been a U.S. citizen at the time of the child's birth. Examples of evidence include an original, valid, or, or, or expired U.S. passport, U.S. birth certificate, consular report of birth abroad, certificate of naturalization, or certificate of citizenship. So, you need to prepare... He prepared his birth certificate, the passport, the old one and the new one, right? The old one's evidence that you were here. Mm -hmm. You have to take pictures of all the pages, photocopies of all the pages, two copies, one for them, one for you. And then they'll look at the dates and going down the line, you just, you just need photocopies of all the pages of the old one. And not the new one, just the just the the, um, the proof that yeah. you're here when we get when I get when I get. Yeah, but that's on the old one. Yeah. Yes. There's also things that go into that too, but we'll get into that later. Yes, and then the next one is evidence of physical presence in the United States. So. I wrangled with this. It's like, how long was I there? Okay, I was born there. I never left this country anymore. Been a couple of weeks, or, you know, a couple of months. So they said, "Well, when was the last time you were there for ten years?" I don't. What are you asking me? I think I just put on there like, you know, oh four. I don't know what. I don't even remember what I put on. I think it's on one of the copies here somewhere. But it's kind of silly. It's like, are you, are you a citizen? When was the last time you were a citizen? That's that new one. So it's it's a really silly question. Yeah, there's that was, a lot of questions. That was one I didn't understand. And but somebody... But anyways, they're going to tell you what, 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 what you're going to put. They won't tell you anything. you got to put it in. Yeah. They don't even look at it, to be honest with you. They just get the copies yeah, and run with it. Because they were in hurry. Well, regardless, if you make a mistake, it's not their fault. So you, you have to make sure that you got everything covered. They look at them quickly, skim through it. I mean, we were there five minutes. We were there four hours, but we were only there five minutes. So both the both passports, right? Both copies of passports yes. for proof of identity. So next will be here. If the child was born in wedlock, parents' original marriage certificate. So you have to prepare your marriage certificate as well. That's yes. everything. That's capacity everything. you got to go to if, if you're married here you got to go to manila and get a capacity to marriage that means you got to take all your divorce decrees from anybody you were ever married to not just one all of them 
take them down. I think mine went all the way back to 1949. They yeah, looked so. all the way back to 1949. It's like, I don't know. They checked <coughs> so, everything. So, case in point, we know a couple that were just trying to get married uh, through Christmas, and they went up, and he didn't take his divorce degrees, which I did tell him, you need to bring your divorce degree. And there was, a, there was an argument. I'm not arguing with you about this. I'm just telling you a fact. Yeah. So they went up there to go get it, and they came back empty-handed. They couldn't get it because of that divorce degree. So yeah, you have to actually, have... Actually, that's the next one that they need. If the child was born in wedlock, divorce degrees, annulment decisions, and death certificates are also... Yes, required. of all previous spouses. Yes, you need to present all of those. And the next is... Evidence of the parent's location at the time of conception. That's where the passport comes in. I was here from for three months, from October to December. Yes. And it shows that. And then they look at her ultrasounds, and they look at her doctor records, and when the baby was born, and they, and they say, okay, well, the time frame works out. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's how they establish that, and for whatever reason. Then the next one will be the evidence of the mother's pregnancy. So these are the examples of what you're going to prepare. What I just mentioned, yeah. the ultrasound, the, the ultrasound, doctor's appointment. Sonograms, sonograms, pregnancy photos, prenatal checkups, you know, hospital photos and everything like that. So the next one is evidence of the parent's relationship before the pregnancy. So that will be photos before the pregnancy, you know, something like that, when you were pregnant. Again, the passport, passport reflects stuff. all the time frames. Mm -mm. Then the next one is sequential or growing up photos of the applicant. So it is the photos of our baby that, you know, from when, he, when she was still little until now. I wasn't here for four years, but... They did all that, and then I was on video constantly. I was here when she was born, though. That mm -hmm. helped. Come here. Speaking and of the, the next. Devil. Speaking of, speaking of, uh, don't talk. Yes. And the Are next say hello? is legitimation evidence. What? Legitimation evidence. This was the one that we're very confused about. But it's just your appearance. Hmm. Right? Mm -mm. Yeah, well, it, it says eligibility of U.S. citizen. What does that mean? Birth certificate, passports, uh, and it, well, when were you last in the United States? Well, I never left the United States. Yes. And they're like, they asked dumb questions. I don't know. It wasn't even them that asked questions. They don't ask questions. So here, if the applicant is younger than 18, please provide the below items in addition to those listed above. So that is completed application of a uh, completed application for CRBA. That is the form DS2029. DS2029. Yes, you have to fill that up. You have to fill the form and then everything will be good. So those are just the things that, you know, you need to bring. And then, there's another one here, original identification documents for the non-U.S. citizen parent. So, these are for the Filipino parents or Filipino spouses. Examples include, but are not limited to, valid passport or two other government-issued photo um, digitalized IDs such as humid ID. Voters ID, SSS, BRC, BIR, driver's license, or senior citizen's card, or whatsoever. So it's just that for those applicants who are younger than 18 years old. But if you, if you also have an applicant is over 18, you have to, aside from those requirements that you prepared, you have to... Um, prepare the application for the U.S. passport that is Form DS-11. So you have to 
um, you have to fill that form, the DS-11. Yes. So it's just Statement that and no one. Statement of social security number. So that's another thing if you're 18 or older. Mm -mm. Um, <coughs> and what's next? Personal appearance. Got to show up in person. Mm -hmm. You cannot. I could not come here. So I could not show up in person. There was no way I was going to be able to show up in person. So I had to wait until I got here. And yes. um, now... They do pay you retro retroactively from the time you applied. So I applied in May, I think. Mm -hmm. Something like that. And again, this only applies for people who are on Social Security. From my understanding. I don't know if it's disability or if there's any kind of another pension, a carpenter's pension or whatever. I don't know about that. Um, but I think this is strictly Social Security. So, um, And depending on what your income is, they'll give you like 50%. Uh, yeah. Remember I hear? They don't give me that. They give the wife that. It's kind of like for the kid. For the wife. So anyways. Yeah, so at that time, we just and if you have two or three did kids, that one. It doesn't mean you get 50% for each kid. It means 50% and then the second kid is yeah, they 50%. Split it up. You get 50% of the 50%. So if it's a thousand, you get five hundred. Then you get two fifty, and then you get you know, so on and so forth. So that's how that all mm -hmm. goes down. From my understanding, I'm not positive, but again, we just did it. We did get notification that her passport is in Dumaguete. Her passport is in Dumaguete, and that's going to be another process to get the Social Security card. So we have to send off the passport in some other forms, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um, we have a guy here who I know has five kids and he's, um, he's been through this a couple of times and he's the one who helped me out through this. We went over there and he had a printer. I didn't have ink. I have a printer. I didn't have ink. So, yeah. Um, thanks to Larry. <laughs> Shout out. <laughs> so we took in a, um, hung out at his house, probably took about an hour or so. Not to print everything out, though. He kind of has been through it. So he had the information packet. Um, he printed that out. This is the American Citizen Services, U.S. Embassy, Manila, U.S. Consular Agency, Cebu. So these are the agency. you got to log into that site and then fill out the form to start the process. Yes. That's You have to register and before you get an appointment, whether in Manila, if you want to go to Manila, or in Cebu, you have to pay for the appointment fee, right? And which it's like is a hundred, yeah, hundred dollars. Now that's we paid for it. Mm -hmm. We had an appointment when I first got here, September. 8th, we didn't, we didn't have any of these documents or anything, and so we. We were, we got the notification in an email or something like that. You did, right? Mm -hmm. And then we were trying to like figure out what we were going to do. Go to Manila or Sipu. We didn't even know, right? We didn't know anything about this. There was no research done. I can't yeah. do it in the States because I don't, they didn't know anything. Social Security doesn't even know about that. They call this the Federal Benefits Unit. So they don't even know about it. And, um... So when I got here, she had the thing. I sat down, I read it real quick, and I says, well, we got to get all this documentation together. Why don't we just pause this, and then, and then we'll pay for it later, and then we'll do this, like, in two weeks. So she canceled, right? Uh, there is no pause button. It's just, it's just pay now, set your appointment, or cancel. So... So she canceled it, with, and my assumption was that we could start it right back up again. That's mm -hmm. not the case. We never, um, we had to go in and pay for it, and then we could never set up an appointment. I checked for a year out, and I checked, they said, they said, oh, check every day. We called them and everything. Oh, that's weird because it's, you know, it's not so weird because this is the government we're working with, and they are, they are slow at best. 
Yes. So, although, whenever we went to the appointment down here at the Zero Ground, Ground Zero? Ground Zero. Coffee shop, we got a video on that. Yeah. It was um, pretty impressive because they only had like six processors doing Veterans Administration and Social Security and Passport. Yes. Stuff. And so they only had six processors, if I remember Something right. Like that. Right? Mm -hmm. And they expected about 50 people to show up. And they were only there that one day until like 4 o'clock. They were getting on the plane at 5 or 6 back to Manila. Oh, and so. Yeah. There's a lot of people. There was like 200 plus. And we were so. in 50. <laughs> we were at number 50. Number and we were there 50, at 6, 5, 30, 6 o'clock in the morning. And um, then people started coming in swarms. And. You know, I knew a lot of the people that were there. Mm -hmm. And some of them were like 109, <laughs> you know. I'm 172, you know. it was. So we asked the people how many people did show up, the processors. Um, somewhere in the neighborhood of 200. And that mm -hmm. was at 9 or 10 o'clock in, in the morning. So it was uh, good luck. Yes, good luck. So that's why I say they didn't look at our paperwork and go over it and say, oh, you didn't cross that T and dot that I. They were looking at it, separating all the paperwork, just throwing them together, stapling them together, throwing them in the folder. And then we stood up and got right in the next chair over. And that was the guy who did the interview. And he goes, well, yes. everything looks okay. From looking at your paper, he didn't. He always just opened the file and flipped through it a little bit. <laughs> okay, fine. And then they put it in an envelope for us and mailed it off from right there. It was like yeah, two hundred pesos. Yeah, Air Twenty One. That's like how much it costs. It's Air Fair. You know. Air Twenty One. Yeah. Yeah. They they set it off right then, and um, it was like eight hundred pesos. Yeah, it five hundred pesos. Two hundred forty. Yeah, two hundred forty. Five bucks. Yeah, two hundred forty. Five bucks. Why don't you go put that in the piggy so bank? Mail that in. And they said that we will just wait for six weeks. That's February 8th. Yeah. It's um, so not they, even, well, it's almost six weeks. It's February, March 1st. Uh huh. So. But when we truck it, it's already here in Dumaguete. So hopefully, maybe next week. Oh, it'll probably be there sooner than that. Or sooner than that. Well, we, we're Next counted week. on six, six weeks, so uh, it's fine. But we're going to be going, baby. We're going to be going and doing the next stage. We're going to be going doing the next stage. Um, yes. As soon as we get the passport. Mm -hmm. And that's to get the Social Security card for her. And then... Once we get that, um, they give you the FBU, Federal Benefits Unit. Yeah, Whatever so we that will is. update what will be the, our next step, what will be the outcome. <laughs> yeah. I guess. I guess. You guess. So. If you have any questions, go ahead and drop a comment down there. We'll keep an eye on this. And, um, and, and again, our, our um, d description is a little bit, you, you know, sketchy. You yeah. can find all this stuff online. Yep. Okay, application for your special. It comes with its directions. And, you know, you can get your passport. You know, you, know, you got your passport. You print it out. And, you know, yeah, just, just print it out. It all pages all pages and um just complete all the documents you can see it there online and don't you know it gets a, it's a little overwhelming it was for us anyways and what i found out is that it's better to have too much than not enough have too many right. copies than not enough because you don't know you and might spill coffee ready. on the stupid thing or whatever but um, it'd be kind of organized when you go in there if you want to make your time fast. I uh, have another friend who went up to Manila to do it, and his name's Monty. His last name's Crew. And the guys who were calling his name thought they were saying Motley Crew. And so it yeah. was, it was to, he sat out there for like three hours. 
And finally, somebody came out and said, what's your name? Monty. Said, oh, Monty. It's not Motley? No, oh, it's Monty. And so they um, mm -mm. jumped up. <laughs> he went in there. And he didn't have all of his paperwork either. But he, he argued with him about some stuff. <laughs> and <clears throat> his wife had done a lot of research in this. And, and she was right. If they don't have to go back up to Manila, they can go to Cebu. So, or that might even been whenever they were coming down here. I don't know. But another thing that I just found out is that you can add these, you can add your married wife here on your taxes. You can go back three years. So you make an addendum, go back three years. I asked my tax guy over there. I married, can I cut her on? Does she have a social security card? No, she's not from the States. No, I can't put her on. I talked to three or four people here and they say, you just add her on. They, they, they'll give you a TIN number. Oh, well, why doesn't this social security guy? They don't know anything. The well, left hand's not talking to the right. So, you know, you got to know somebody who's been through this stuff to really get a, a you know, a fat belly. <laughs> have some kind of sinus cold thing dripping down in my throat. Anyways, you have to know somebody who's been through this stuff. And that's why we're doing this video is because it's complicated. If you're in the States and you're trying to do this and... and with no idea. <laughs> you, you have no idea because I've done research on this stuff. Even with the guy telling me right on the video, you know, what's his name? Roland. Uh -uh. What? He's telling me and I'm doing the research Roland. on it and I couldn't find anything. Yes. It's even hard to understand. So it's better to, you know, to have friends and you can talk to them personally about this one. It's, it's not hard to understand. The first thing you have to do is go in here and say, this is the government. So it's all going to be non, it's going to be the most simplest form in the most complicated way. That's one way of putting it. They don't tell you in terms that relate to real people. They'll tell you, you know, they'll give you way too much information. You don't need that. You know, you need your passport, birth certificate, marriage certificate, capacity to marry. You need the birth certificate of the child. You need the um, doctor, um, the, the, the list of doctor medical records, medical records and, um, um, t you know, I mean, there's a lot of stuff, but it's just, you know, I just had my passport and birth certificate. I didn't have mm -mm. no social security card, no, no fingerprints, no two by two pictures, mm -mm. all of us, two, four, six. So I hope this video makes sense to you. Yeah. You just ready everything and make, make double check and then make some copies of it. Yeah. For you not to look for, you know, a photocopier. Because once you do that, and then good luck. <laughs> once your documents is locking, then good luck. Mm -mm. Yeah, it's, it's not complicated. It's just they make it more complicated than it needs to be. I mean, you know, so that's my take on it. I, you know, they'll tell you a different story, I'm mm -hmm. sure. So anyways, that's kind of where we're at with this mm -mm. um we're gonna do another video this is my wife's channel yes so anyways thank you so much for watching and i hope that this video can help you <laughs> yes and don't forget to like subscribe subscribe and click the notification bell below for more updates yeah and and of course don't forget to subscribe our other channel which is the Smith Farm in PH. So I'm gonna put it here Smith down Fam. below. S M I T H F M yes. F A M. Smith Farm in PH. In PH, all separate words.
Yes. So I, that's one I've started up when I got mm -hmm. here. So um, please support our channel and thank you so much for watching. Yeah. Thanks a lot, guys. Bye. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.